Welcome back, everyone. Let's resume the second half of day two of Digital Skills Week right here at the Malaysia Tech Month 2021. Join us as I welcome the next session. An important topic for job seekers out there, especially entitled Workplace Attitude and Communications. Moderating this session is Mohamed Ashraf Mohamed Saini, Assistant Director, I leave KBS. Therefore, over to you, Cik Ashraf. Okay. Terima kasih, uh, Cik Hasrul. Assalamualaikum dan selamat petang kepada semua. Salam Malaysia Perhatian uh, bagi peserta-peserta My Digital Workforce Week Malaysia Tech Month 2021. Sesi webinar pada petang ini dibawakan kepada anda oleh rakan strategi MDEC iaitu Institut Pembangunan dan Kecemerlangan Kepimpinan ILEAD Kementerian Belia dan Sukan. Selamat datang juga kepada panel kita pada petang ini iaitu Puan Haz Hani Razai Bolender. Selamat datang Puan. Selamat. Thank you. Okey. Baik. Uh, sebagai perkenalan, hard skill atau perkara teknikal adalah kepakaran secara teknikal dan pengetahuan diperlukan untuk memenuhi keperluan pekerjaan. Manakala soft skill atau kemahiran insani pula adalah kualiti interpersonal juga dikenali sebagai kemahiran kemanusiaan people skill dan sifat peribadi yang dimiliki oleh seseorang. Banyak artikel dan penulisan yang menyatakan soft, soft skill sebagai elemen yang sangat penting dalam diri seseorang yang memohon kerja. Malah ada kaji selidik bersama dengan kumpulan majikan mendapati bahawa majikan-majikan ini memerlukan pekerja baru yang mempunyai soft skill di samping hard skill. Antara soft skill yang dianggap penting adalah termasuk integriti, komunikasi, tanggungjawab, kemahiran sosial attitude yang positif, profesionalisme, teamwork dan work ethics. Justru topik pada petang ini adalah khusus mengenai sikap dan komunikasi di tempat kerja atau workplace attitude and communication. Baik, sekiranya ada soalan yang ingin ditanya pada panel, tuan-tuan dan puan boleh menaik di ruangan Q&A di bawah ataupun di Facebook juga boleh disoal di ruangan komen di Facebook. Bagi menghuraikan topik ini, Workplace Attitude and Communication, kami bawakan anda Puan Hani Razai Bolender yang merupakan pengasas bersama dan pengurus besar Dragonfire Corporate Solutions yang berhad iaitu sebuah syarikat perunding pengurusan yang berpusat di Kuala Lumpur. Beliau sangat arif dalam bidang pengurusan kerjaya, meningkatkan kemahiran belia siswa Zah bagi memenuhi keperluan pekerjaan dan keusahawanan, pengembangan, zak, uh, pengembangan bakat, pengurusan konflik, pengurusan perubahan atau change management dan keberkesanan organisasi. Klien Hani terdiri daripada pelbagai organisasi dan industri termasuklah JLC, MNC, SME dan juga jabatan-jabatan dalam sektor awam. Antaranya termasuklah Touch and Go, Malaysia Airlines System, Kementerian Pengangkutan, Jabatan Kerja Raya dan Nam Institute for the Empowerment of Women. Hani juga merupakan HRDF Trainer, Stratpad Business Coach, Emergenetic Associate and Consultant, Business Assessor and Internal Verifier dengan kelayakan Pearson BTEC tahap 5, Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Centered Coaching Professional and a Global Leadership Assessment GLA 360 Professional. Beliau kini sedang melanjutkan pelajaran MBA di sebuah universiti tempatan. Hanya juga berkhidmat sebagai ahli lembaga penasihat industri di School of Business University Monash Malaysia. Dari tahun 2018 hingga 2020, majalah atas talian Marketing in Asia menamakan Hani sebagai salah satu top inspirational LinkedIn icon in Malaysia to follow. Tanpa membuang masa, saya persilakan The Career Doctor, Hani Razai Bolander. Silakan. Terima kasih Encik Ashraf, terima kasih Encik Hasrul. Assalamualaikum semua uh, dan selamat petang kepada rakan-rakan uh, yang ada petang ni. Uh, Encik Ashraf, it's good to see you. Petang ni kita dah dari minggu lepas uh, berbincang ataupun dah berborak mengenai topik ni, uh, Workplace Attitude and Communication. Uh, saya sangat setuju sebenarnya bila kita cakap mengenai Workplace Attitude and Communication ni adalah salah satu uh, Uh, bukannya salah satu lagi dah salah dua uh, daripada uh, soft, uh, soft skills yang memang kita punya our our employers ya yeah, our employers are, are looking for uh, uh, for for good uh, for for happiness in, in the place of work jadi hari ini uh, 
we have not so much time uh, kita ada lebih kurang sejam saja so perhaps ada some of the some of the parts of my um, uh, sharing sekejap lagi uh, saya nak minta uh, feedback daripada kita punya participants uh, i won't be able to see them so hopefully uh, our team uh, at the back end uh, will be able to help me uh, to uh, to sort out uh, some of the feedback uh, when when i ask them uh, later on jadi Encik Ashraf, uh, terima kasih sekali, uh, sekali lagi kerana memperkenalkan uh, saya. Um, alright, so let's bring out my 100 slides. Well, I'm just kidding. No, no 100 slides. <laughs> alright, so basically today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I I have um, a little bit of time to share with all of you about workplace attitude and communication and, and why it's important uh, for all of us. It's not just about how the organization is looking at, uh, uh, looking at how they, they need to develop or are looking forward to have the employees to have work, the right workplace uh, attitude and communication. But basically, this is something that we ourselves um, uh, have control over and, and it starts from us. Yeah, and it starts from us. Let's uh, take a look at some of the things that I would like to share with uh, all of you this afternoon. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, Encik Ashraf has uh, uh, finally spoken about me. I've, uh, I've never heard uh, at how it's being explained that way. So thank you so much, Encik Ashraf. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy about the kind of work that I do is that I'm, I'm, I'm able to work with um, a broad spectrum of clients. So from the B2B and as well as B2C. Some of my clients would, um, would want uh, my team and I to design something that is uh, going to help uh, their, their talents within uh, to think a little bit more about the career uh, and the kind of uh, bridging the gaps um, uh, skills that would be very beneficial uh, for them. Yeah. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a few things today. So what's on our agenda today? So a few things, uh, I just want to um, uh, do a little bit of, uh, you know, setting the stage. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what is a workplace attitude um, very important, how to recognize uh, that attitude problem, do we need some attitude adjustment uh, and all that, and why is this important uh, in recognizing uh, problem, uh, attitude problem, and how does that translate to communication at the workplace. Uh, I'm also going to touch a little bit about communication barriers, uh, reducing common misunderstand misunderstandings between team and even, you know, between friends and spouses, perhaps. Um, a few styles of communication and a uh, some quick tips on effective communication. So I hope that uh, for the next uh, uh, one hour, um, my sharing will be beneficial to, to all of you. I'm going to kick off my session today with um, a, a sharing of a case study. So we, this obviously uh, uh, is a case study uh, just before our pandemic started, uh, which was uh, in March last year. So everybody remembers about March last year. The whole world remembers about March last year. So anything that has happened before March uh, of last year, because I remember uh, my husband and I, we used to travel quite a bit, you know, taking out the, uh, taking, uh, taking out the car for a drive, or we will have uh, uh, book uh, some cheap airlines and just go for a quick getaway over the weekend. So um, with this case study, it's very quick, uh, case study, uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, about Southwest Airlines. So this, uh, this case study is very interesting because um, uh, similarly to our uh, low fare airline here in Malaysia, which is Air Asia, Southwest Airlines, uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, you know, uh, in North America, um, uh, airlines, uh, Southwest Airline is uh, one of the biggest um, low-cost airline, and they are based in Dallas, Texas. They are huge. There's so many people who are working for them, yeah, um, and uh, they have something like 54,000 employees, and obviously this number um, uh, was before the pandemic uh, came in uh, globally. So what happened is that there was um, uh, 
way back in, in 2017, the organization has announced that it would share their 500 over million in profits with its entire employees. Now, mind you, all of this um, is, it, it's a lot of money, 500 over million to be shared in terms of profits with everyone uh, under their employment. Now, how is this translated to what we're going to talk about today, which is the workplace attitude and communication. Now, mind you, if we start thinking about our own uh, our own country, and we start talking about our own airlines, for example, our low-cost airline, and there's only a few in Malaysia. What are the kind of complaints that we usually hear, um, you know, in terms of uh, service-wise or communication-wise, anything of that sort? And here's the thing about Southwest Airlines. I'm going to just quickly uh, read here. It received one of the lowest number of complaints of all US airlines for customers. So it is one of the lowest. It, it was less than 10 for a year. Can you imagine that? I, I personally can't imagine it. And why is that? Because one of the one of the commitment that the organization has placed is that the priorities lies with the employees first. The priorities lies with employees first and customers second. So they believe that once they take care of their employees, their employees will be able to take care of the customers. And so that will be the basis of my session today with all of you to have a little bit of internal, internal realization about the kind of workplace, the kind of attitude that we ourselves need to be mindful of, the kind of communications that comes up from our mouth, for example, the kind of body language that we are demonstrating to our colleagues, uh, to our friends, our family members, the people uh, that we love sometimes, uh, that we sometimes take for granted, for example, and and uh, I hope that um, I would inspire all of you to, uh, to take a stand on uh, being mindful uh, over the concept of uh, the attitude and communications, yeah? So uh, coming back to Southwest Airlines, uh, what they have instilled uh, in the work culture is the culture of fun and inclusive core value. So it becomes the DNA of their organization where all the 54,000 employees has demonstrated the fact that once they are happy, um, the, the, the attitude towards their roles, towards their job, uh, towards uh, the care for their customers uh, will be taken care of by that happiness itself. And whatever, you know, uh, the care that they are, they are demonstrating or displaying uh, is, is the result of them being happy but happiness is a very gray area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just walk through you guys uh, um, with a few more things yeah? so just give me a second here all right now let's start on a, a second level knowing your work values is important so what's it got to do with anything of the story that i've just shared with all of you yeah so Work values is important. Why is work values important? Work values, uh, it has to do with everything about the your preferences on about your work, about you know the 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 job that you do, the role that you do, the kind of things that you do on a daily basis, purpose, and path that you are creating. What is meaningful for you in your work? So if we can get this right down pat. And we are very clear about all of this, uh, of all these elements. Uh, it, it just makes um, the, the, the work more meaningful for you. You'll be happier at work. And again, as I mentioned, yeah, if you are happier at work, then it just, it just shows in the way you carry yourself, uh, the, the choice of words that you, that you uh, uh, talk uh, to your colleagues and all that and um, uh, the workplace is a much uh, better place it's much more positive so here's the thing 
Um, when we start talking about work values, there are three things or the, there are three categories that uh, we want to be mindful of. And uh, perhaps you may want to reflect upon yourself uh, the kind of work that you've been doing for the past, I don't know, five, 10, 15 years. Um, uh, one, of the thing, one, of, one of the three things that I'm going to touch about is the intrinsic uh, and extrinsic, um, extrinsic and lifestyle values. So why is this important? I'm going to just walk uh, you guys through just right after this. But let me give you some examples of what does all this mean. For example, if we're talking about the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic um, uh, work values, so this is the inner motivation. This is what you like. This is what you want. And you think this is what you need. Uh, for example, if you think that you're being creative um, or feeling respected, if this is something that you want, this is something that you value, yeah, and uh, uh, being creative means in terms of solution, uh, so, so, so being uh, delivering solution, for example, in, if the boss says, honey, um, uh, the end goal is this, I will leave it entirely up to you uh, on, on how you're going to manage this. Uh, okay, so this is the kind of um, uh, empowerment that I'm craving for, that I will work best. This is, uh, this is when uh, we can say this is the uh, intrinsic uh, work values that I'm craving for. So if, if an organization uh, is able to provide me with this kind of empowerment, I'll work better. Yeah. So the next one is extrinsic, which is the tangible rewards. Um, for example, um, uh, there's a fact that when we start designing uh, um, uh, what you call that uh, packages uh, for for our employees, there might be some variances for those who are just uh, newly onboarded uh, to those who are being um, uh, towards the end of their uh, cycle with the organization. For example, in terms of insurance, uh, um, those who are in their mid thirties onwards, they would value more in terms of healthcare. Yeah, uh, for those who are being onboarded at a young age, uh, most likely they will look at package, which is salary. So usually uh, they will be concerned about the starting package. They will ask, oh, how much is the salary and all that. Of course, we don't ask this question just right away. But uh, those are the drivers uh, for them uh, to, to come in, you know, and wake up in the morning and say that I want to work today. So these are some of the uh, things that they will be looking at versus, as I mentioned, uh, those who are in the uh, 30s and 40s and 50s. And in fact, those who are in their 30s and 40s versus the one who are retiring soon have different um, uh, tangible rewards that they're looking for. Um, uh, for example, they may want longer annual leave or they want more uh, uh, paternity, longer paternity, more than three days. So these are the kind of stuff that they'll be looking for. And they value it so much that it becomes some sort of a, uh, uh, the, the, the deciding factor for them to be happy while at work. Last but not least is the lifestyle value. So this is a bit interesting because these are personal preferences. Uh, for example, some of us may prefer to work five minutes away uh, from our home. You know, when we used to go to office before, or before the pandemic, some of us don't mind at all. Um, I used to drive down to KL uh, because I live in Kuala Selangor, right? So if I were to go down to my office and or, or to my client's office, I don't mind traveling. So the lifestyle values, the, the, the perceived values that I think is uh, acceptable for me. Uh, I don't mind traveling. Um, I don't even mind traveling um, overnight, for example, to be with my favorite client, something like that. So this is this is a personal preference. Uh, ability to purchase goods or services based on preferences as well. So again, you know, uh, uh, I want, uh, I'll give you an example. If I want to be able to get some discounts on FMB, I, all I want to do is to work with uh, FMB based uh, uh, companies. I'm, I, I'm not interested to work with something else because I can get discounts and all that. So remember, in the old days, some of our uh, parents, if you, if you all remember, uh, some of our uh, parents in the old days, they will say, 
why don't you work with the government? Because then your life is guaranteed, right? Uh, they, they will say, okay, so it's easy for you to get your housing loan, it's easy to get your car loan, uh, and uh, could you, that, you know, it's easy to get your jodo and all that. So this is uh, preferences, personal preferences in terms of lifestyle. It gives you that anchor where it is perceived as being uh, anchored in. And uh, sometimes this is more valued than the other motivations um, uh, work uh, in terms of work values wise. Yeah, so this is the basis of uh, work values. And uh, again, why is this important uh, when we start relating it back to workplace uh, attitude and then translating it to communication? Would you just um, uh, share for the next one? <clears throat> now, that is what we call here dimensions of job satisfaction. Uh, remember earlier we talked about work values, you know, what we appreciate, what we want uh, and preferences. Uh, those are uh, work values. But job satisfaction is an extension for all of those, right? So, for example, once we have already started working, I remember some of us have been working for so long. Um, I remember when I used to, I, I used to have this client um, when we had a, a uh, a downsizing exercise. Unfortunately, um, you know, a, a company had to downsize uh, its entire workforce, and I was tasked to um, uh, to provide support uh, in terms of career coaching for one of the one of the uh, employees for one of the senior leadership. And it just so happened that it was a CFO uh, of the company. He said to me, "Honey, I've been working here for thirty years." I've been going to work for 30 years and I've been doing the same thing. And today I realized that I've never liked my job. So I cannot imagine for the life of me that we've been going to work for 30 years and one day we wake up and realize that we're not really happy at our work. So this is sort of like a, 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 an, an internal a realization for him. So he decided that, okay, so I don't like this anymore and maybe the downsizing is, uh, is a God's blessing uh, for him. Um, and uh, what he really liked to do is wood carving. So uh, I, I don't know, from, you know, uh, playing with numbers and all that, he is actually most happy working with his tools, his hands, carving stuff. And he, he does create the most beautiful, you know, uh, carvings that I, I've seen. He, he likes it so much. And, you know, after a few months, he said, thank you so much for that conversation. He just realized that sometimes, uh, or rather most of the time in this case, is that your, your, your work, your task, your role, the why you're doing what you're doing, it needs to be meaningful to you. Sometimes we'll feel so out of place and we've been doing this for years, years in, years out. And, and sometimes when we wake up one morning, we just realize that we're not very happy with what we do. So we're very good at what we do. So happiness, being, being skilled at, at what you do is totally different from whether you like it or not. It's just so different, right? So for example, like me, I, I can do my PNL, I can do my check balance towards the end of the towards the end of the month. But uh, whether I like it, no, I, I leave it to my business partner to do that. I I I'd rather do something else. So it has to be meaningful. It has to be interesting to you. Yeah. So job satisfaction. One of the elements of job satisfaction is whether you can get a meaningful, uh, meaningful uh, experience from the kind of work that you do. The next one is uh, compensation, yeah? pay or package, uh, uh, whether you are seeing the kind of input and outcome impact that you're doing uh, equates to the kind of package that you receive. So sometimes um, we tend to hear uh, our friends are saying, you know, I've been working so hard day in, day out, and this is all I'm getting. See, so this is all too familiar to some of us. And one of the elements of job satisfaction is to have um, 
that positive per uh, perception that whatever that we are putting uh, our effort into is being compensated by uh, the, the right package to us. So some of us may be able to say, I'm very okay with 3,000 ringgit. I get a lot of things, but some people, they go like, huh, 3,000 ringgit. I can't even pay for my cat's food with that 3,000 ringgit. So, you know, so th this is the kind of uh, 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 elements that we have to ask ourselves, what is being perceived as the right package, the right compensation for the, the kind of work that we are doing on a daily basis. Uh, another thing is opportunities. Some of us may see um, our friends uh, are leaving the organization, not because that they are perform performers, not that they haven't made uh, an impact in the organization, no, but um, they have outgrown their role. They have outgrown their space within the organization and therefore they are looking out uh, for other places so that they can grow into the new mold that they have created for themselves. Advancement, learning opportunities, uh, some of these things are very, very real to all of us. Some of us may just want to stay, you know, they, 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 they just prefer to be in the same spot, doing the same thing. I know for a fact, a friend, uh, we left school together more than 30 years ago. And uh, she is still working in the same bank, uh, doing more or less the same job, and she's very happy. There's nothing wrong with it. It makes her happy. I'm not here to uh, judge um, whether she should be shifting to a new role or doing something else. No, all of us need to accept the fact that each of us uh, sees opportunities differently. Everyone has our own lenses um, uh, to, to uh, make sure uh, we, we know what is happiness to us. Um, and uh, therefore, it translates to the attitude uh, at our workplace. And therefore, you know, uh, being positive and where uh, we are more, more uh, uh, play uh, in the role that we're playing in the organization. Last, uh, last second last thing is about leadership. Um, leadership. Uh, is very interesting because we sometimes hear people don't leave job because of the job itself. We leave job because of our bosses. Um, I'm not quite sure about all of you, but I, yes, I have left jobs because of uh, poor leadership. Uh, it wasn't acceptable at all. Uh, I'm not embarrassed to say that. So 30 over years, I've left several bosses. Uh, but I have worked with fantastic bosses, even though, you know, the salary wasn't really that cool, but I believe in the why he, my bosses was there. I believe in the causes and it makes me stay and it didn't feel like work at all. So leadership plays one of the most important part when we start asking ourselves about job satisfaction. And last but not least, uh, least uh, which is the echoes, uh, echo support at work. Our colleagues, uh, whether we feel that we are part of the team or do we feel that we are only uh, one of the so many and we feel so lonely. So again, it depends on um, what we're looking for, uh, but all of this, uh, the, all of this uh, will definitely translate to job satisfaction, which in return will translate to the, to our own attitude when we start, um, you know, behaving and communicating in our workplace. So that's, um, that ends to a very quick introduction to uh, the dimension uh, of job satisfaction. Now I'm going to just uh, quickly do this. Uh, if I can get help from our team out there because I won't be able to see um, the feedback uh, if there is, yeah? So I hope there is. Uh, what's your work values? What do you, what do you look for? Give me one. What do you look for in your workplace? What are you looking for? Are you looking for gratitude? Are you looking for pay? Are you looking for long live? Are you looking for good leadership? Are you looking for good ecosystem? Are you looking for recognition? There's so many. If I can ask you this question and you can just share with me um, one, for example, that might be a good start. Um, so let's just give that a few seconds. 
maybe I can just quickly ask and she Ashraf here, uh, my my esteemed MC to uh, boleh share apa you punya work values and eh? Ashraf what are you looking for? Eh? Uh, saya uh, semua ada rasanya <laughs> semua ada kita kita ada juga kita punya uh, rasa nak gaji tu sendiri kan dan ada juga, ah, betul, kita juga nak juga kebahagiaan lah kebahagiaan keseronokan yeah. dalam buat kerja tu Mm-hmm. Ya, yeah, okay. So semua nak ada, semua kita nak ada lah kan. Uh, yep. Tetapi kita pun tahu semua tu tidak akan ada 100%. Ah, uh, uh, it, it's quite impossible. Kecuali you buka uh, company sendiri. Tapi kadang-kadang buka company sendiri pun tak jalan juga. Ah, uh, ada je yang tertinggal. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Encik Ashraf. So ada apa-apa feedback daripada kita punya uh, anyone else? So far belum lagi. Belum lagi, okay tak apa. It's okay. So something yang I rasa kita boleh, uh, satu soalan yang kita boleh tinggalkan uh, dengan kita punya uh, audience hari ni because it's very important. Uh, boleh kita come back to the slide? ya? Yeah. Thank you so much. Jadi ini satu soalan. This might be one question that you you want to ask uh, yourself. Uh, and I always say this, one of the hardest questions or one of the hardest conversation that we will have is a conversation with ourselves. What is your work values? So sometimes you are so unhappy at work because we just don't know. What is it really? We just can't put our fingers in, you know, because the pay is really great. You know, we get to be able to bring our family for holidays. We get to buy all our beautiful stuff. Um, we have a beautiful house, uh, good colleagues, but there is something else which is missing. And this is one question I advise you to ask yourself, what's your work values? What is it that is missing? And that might be one of the toughest conversations you will ever have with yourself. You'll be surprised at the answer you discover. Okay, so moving on. Uh, for organizations, and I'm just now uh, taking you from the internal uh, to the self uh, internalization, which is ourself, to the other side of the fence, which is the organization. Uh, how do we track job satisfaction? A lot of companies uh, have uh, have always wondered this, or bosses will will wonder, are my employees happy? Are my direct reports happy with my kind of leadership or my company or my department? So one, uh, a few things that that job satisfaction is being tracked for, yeah, is um, there are several ways to go about this, but uh, let me just run through here. Uh, one of it is through EES or Employee Engagement Survey. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with EES, usually this is run once a year. Uh, it's a full event throughout a couple of weeks, for example, or several weeks that runs to the leading of the uh, sharing of the EES results. So they will say, okay, so our staff wants this, our staff uh, appreciates this more, and this is what we're going to do for next year. We're going to take top three and we're going to run it as initiative for the year next. So this might happen, you might have uh, seen it before, might have experienced it, or some of you may have experienced in designing the ES um, uh, initiative. The next one is exit interviews. I used to um, uh, look at exit interviews as an event that is uh, uh, not very engaging because we we only start talking to the uh, employees uh, who are living towards the end uh, after they have resigned or they have handed out their resignation. So the job satisfaction, obviously, at exit interviews, they will tell you, you know what, you suck. We, uh, I don't want to work with you anymore. So we, that's why I'm leaving. Uh, and <laughs> uh, job satisfaction, you know, that is just going down the drain. So exit interviews is usually, to my perspective, is something that is a, a, is a box that needs to be ticked, but it does nothing really. 
Uh, however, having said that, there are some companies who are still doing exit interviews just at the last minute when the employee is exiting, right? So they have put this element into tracking job satisfaction. The other one, similarly to EES or Employee Engagement Survey, is a pulses. Uh, it is short surveys um, uh, that is being run every quarter or something like that. Uh, just, you know, a quick check in about how things are, about how uh, uh, the employees are feeling over certain uh, uh, issues, for example. So they, they use pulses. Uh, customer experience service, this is uh, one of the better ways to, to check on the pulses of uh, job satisfaction. Because remember, when, we, uh, when I started talking about uh, the airline, Earlier, is that how they measure uh, is not so much about you know, with with the with the uh, employees, but at how uh, happy uh, the customers are with the experience they are going through with the airlines. So very less um, uh, complaints, for example, that would be one of the elements uh, of customer experience service uh, that will be incorporated into job uh, satisfaction. Uh, a periodical check-in. So this, you know, uh, this is being done at a level, uh, at a very uh, ground level, um, uh, the weekly check-ins and all that. So this is how job satisfaction um, it is being tracked. Um, and again, attitude is something that uh, we observe uh, in terms of uh, how they respond, how the employees uh, or individuals respond um, uh, towards, uh, towards what's happening around, uh, around them. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Um, just uh, something that I thought of uh, that might give you a little bit of reflection uh, uh, today. Yeah, do you do you think now? This is a very interesting question. Do you think the younger and the older people are similar uh, in what they're looking for uh, in terms of being happy, uh, being happier at work? Um, so, what what do you all think about that? Yeah, do you think uh, uh, younger and older people are looking? Uh, for something the same or something different in order for them to be happier at work. So the younger ones are looking for, uh, I'm not quite sure, uh, the, the older ones uh, uh, might be looking at something else. Um, so if you have some thoughts about this question, uh, feel free uh, to, uh, to share in the in the chat box and perhaps I'll take a look at it later and maybe the team can share with me later on. So something for you all to think about um, in terms of um, uh, being happier at work. Now, just fairly quickly as well, I'm just going to wrap up um, um, on the concept of uh, how workplace attitudes complement communication. So remember, sometimes we do meet people or colleagues who have such bad attitude. They just say, you know, I think you need attitude adjustment because whatever that comes up from you sounds so negative. Everything is negative because it starts from the attitude. It starts from how they perceive themselves playing a role in that organization or the kind of job or the kind of role that they, they do. So uh, workplace attitudes, uh, do complement communication as the happier they are, uh, the more realization, uh, the kind of impact that they do in the organization uh, creates uh, more or better well being and better choice of words. Yeah? So we are more mindful if we have more positive attitude at work. Uh, the kind of words that comes out from us will be so much better. I, I can tell you that. So uh, if you all can reflect on your own experience, uh, you will see that, uh, that, those who are, that those who are with negative uh, workplace attitude will also speak ill of others and even for themselves. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm okay, just shifting a little. Yes, I am. Okay, yes, I am. Uh, uh, kita ada kebetulan. Uh, apa, Hani ada sebut tentang negative uh, workplace lah kan? Yeah. Uh, kebetulan dekat Facebook kita ada ada soalan, komen mm -hmm. daripada Elia mm -hmm. Sulaiman. Assalamualaikum and very good evening to moderator brother Ashraf and Madam Hani. 
yeah. I would like to ask how to overcome the toxic environment and people at the workplace. If this toxic situation is growth at workplace, maybe it mm. would liberalize motivation, spirit, and job satisfaction for the employees mm. going to work. Mm. How may them overcome this situation? Can you <laughs> give the tips or guidelines for these matters? Thanks for the okay. Feedback. Okay. All right. Terima kasih Encik Ashraf. Uh, terima kasih kepada uh, Elias Sulaiman. Uh, very relevant question. Um, cumanya, uh, here's the thing. I don't have, I don't, I wish I have an exact answer to that. Um, but I can share a few things with you, perhaps. Um, but before that, let me just ask a few questions. Uh, and if you can just kind of reflect over this. So you talked about toxic workplace. So toxic workplace, ni, it can it can uh, it can be due to several several uh, elements. Yeah. So it might be uh, it might be toxic boss. It might be toxic everybody. Uh, it might be a uh, toxic colleague uh, or it might be toxic you. <laughs> Kadang-kadang kita tak tahu kita ni sebenarnya pun toxic juga. Tapi orang tak mau cakap kat kita sebab dia tak nak offend kita pun ada juga. And because that our world view is so negative that we think other people also is negative. Okay, so again, as I uh, remember when I said one of the hardest uh, conversation that we have is a conversation with ourselves. So first, we must our, uh, ask ourselves, why do we see uh, this place as a toxic workplace? What is it that doesn't work well? Having said that, remember, I talked about work values earlier, right? So I talked about work values. Uh, we have to know what ideally should be there in our workplace. Respectful environment, for example. Uh, respectful bosses and colleagues. Mindful uh, uh, and fair uh, job sharing, for example. All of these are ideal. And you have to choose what are those important stuff first, three, four things. But, and here's the thing, the minute you see those things are not aligned to what the experience you have within the organization. Contohnya, uh, bos you marah, uh, suka baling-baling barang, uh, macam one of my bosses dulu, kerja dia, dia, dia bila dia marah, dia baling file. Bila dia marah, dia baling file. Bukan dia baling, biasa-biasa, uh, dia baling ke muka. So, I told myself, even though you pay me so much, you know, I really enjoy my work. I love my colleagues. But you know what? This kind of behavior is not something that I can tolerate, that I want to tolerate. And I have to go because there is no way that my boss will change. So the, uh, again, uh, for Elias, uh, I wish I have a more concrete answer for you. Um, you have to ask a few questions first. Okay, first you have to ask you first and then you have to ask uh, a few questions and then you have to make decision. Uh, most likely, if it comes from bad culture, bad leadership, uh, it's kind of hard to change it overnight unless somebody dies or somebody leave um, and things might change. Uh, other than that, you have to make that tough call uh, whether you want to stay or you want to go. So there you go. Okay. Okay, honey, another question. Sure. Uh, from our technical. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the tell telltale signs of a toxic workplace? Ha, cuba kita come up with my slide ada tips kat situ I dah tahu dah soalan macam ni sure keluar <laughs> ok so uh, let me see ya. Eh. Um, ok just a moment so the telltale come here eh. let me see so one of the telltale so this is uh, I'm talking about communication barriers there, tapi dia translate kepada workplace attitude ataupun toxicity in the work environment. Usually, there are so many barriers. Uh, and again, barriers ni dia, dia can be anything lah eh. Uh, it can be language, it can be psychological, it can be physical, it can be attitude, cultural and all that. Jadi, bila kita dah ada roadblock tu, so uh, barriers ni ialah roadblock. So, imagine 
uh, kita sekarang PKP, okay lockdown, kita nak keluar, uh, dia ada roadblock. Okay so roadblock ni dia tak boleh nak negotiate lagi dah. Dia kata you tak ada surat pun dia semua, dia tak boleh. But it, it becomes so toxic um, uh, that uh, you know that uh, it doesn't really work for you. So the one of the telltales is that bila kita ada conflict. So one of the most common telltales is bila kita ada conflict. Conflict ni can be very senang and can be very easy to to detect because uh, the smallest thing. For example, uh, office uh, selalunya office kita ada pantry ya. Yeah? Jadi kita ada pantry ni, uh, kita adalah kopi kita, teh kita, our sugar and whatever else and people bringing food. Remember this is before PKP. Uh, and people bringing food and all that and sometimes some of our colleagues are just so lazy to wash off their own mugs. So they tend to leave their mugs in the sink and let everyone else to wash but themselves. So this is simple conflict. Uh, and I, I can guarantee this has, uh, 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 everyone here can, uh, can uh, relate to this simplest thing. Or for example, uh, ada orang uh, tapau food, yeah, letak in the fridge, dia dah tulis dah nama dia, uh, this is my food, Hani punya, jangan ambil. Tak, ada juga yang ambil benda tu. Ha, dia ambil, dia, bukan dia replace lagi dah, dia buat tak tahu je. So all these are little conflicts, but if it is a toxic environment, it can be blown out of proportion. And I tell you, I have seen it. It has been blown out of proportion simply because somebody has brought in food from somewhere and it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, kosher, okay? So somebody has uh, allergy to a certain kind of food. Dah tulis lah dekat luar fridge tu. Do not place anything that has nuts, that has milk, that has, you know, so many things. But yet somebody just forgot about it, brought something to the office pantry, place it in the fridge and it became an issue that even the managing director got involved. That's a telltale because there is no respect among the employees, among the colleagues. So these are the language barriers. So I hope um, <laughs> uh, the telltale, it doesn't have to be big things. Uh, it, it can start with small stuff first. So, you know, um, start with managing crisis. Huh? Okay, so any other question from there? Ada apa-apa lagi? Dia tak ada, uh, boleh teruskan. Tak ada? Okay, very good. So, uh, let me just see about my slide uh, dulu. Mari kita tengok. I just want to, how much time do we have on Jashra? Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Right, so... Thank you. So um, I've touched a little bit about communication at work, uh, and um, this this is basically you know a, a wrap up of what we what we do at work, uh, even at home. Um, communication skills is often cited as a key competency among employees that are needed by employees. So true enough. Sometimes kita ni tidak sedar yang kita ada lack. Uh, we are lacking in that particular department uh, in terms of of communicating what we want, how we feel, uh, uh, and all that, our thoughts and all that. And, and, and what will that happen is that, uh, what will happen is that if we, we have that gap, it, it's very difficult for us to express um, effectively uh, towards the, the, the kind of work that we want to do. For example, if you are being tasked uh, to uh, to work with a with a, a new team, for example, and communication skills is something that you are not uh, pretty much good at. You will find that you your voice will will be drowned by the louder voices. So I'm not saying about um, uh, audio voices, but more of uh, um, uh, what you call that behaviors and uh, personality. Those of our colleagues who are, I would say, louder uh, or rather more expressive, uh, um, they will be heard better. And that is where 
for those of us who are not in preference to um, uh, taking part in, in a conversation in the workplace or in meetings, for example, uh, may be at a disadvantage. So we have to realize that sometimes our preference may, may work against us and you need to cross that barrier. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to just quickly uh, run through this um, in, in terms of the, the next slide. So how is workplace communication different from social communication? Um, I, I thought that this image is pretty apt. Uh, one person is talking uh, uh, ayam, uh, the other one is talking uh, adak, but they're still talking. They understand what they're saying. It's just that the other person, you know, it just goes as triple seven. Um, and I thought that this quote by George Bernard uh, Shaw uh, is apt uh, with this uh, image. Uh, the single, single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So sometimes we can say uh, something to our colleague or as a manager, we have said something to our uh, subordinates or our employees, and yet they end up with something else. And we thought, you didn't. I make myself clear when I give you that instruction, so I do not. Yeah. So uh, workplace communication is slightly different from social communication because um, in social communication, you can put any elements inside there. You can put your short, uh, uh, short abbreviations and all that, which sometimes rouse me up. Uh, I know that most of you will say the same thing. You know, we don't, we don't. Uh, uh, send emails uh, using uh, WhatsApp language, for example. But workplace communication is to totally different uh, from social communication because it has those elements of, um, of, of being proper at the same time. So uh, same difference, it's just that when we, when we um, uh, communicate uh, in workplace, uh, there are other elements that take into place as well. Power play, for example, if you're writing to somebody who is in the higher hierarchy, for example, that might be a little bit different. If you're writing to MD, you're writing to the CEO, or you're writing to fellow colleagues. Uh, again, this comes back to the work culture of the organization. If it's a cool, chill kind of workplace, then everybody's on the same name basis. But if you don't know this and you uh, and this is where you came from and you've been trained in that environment and then you go in into a place or an uh, organization where they are a little bit more hierarchical, you know, a little bit more conservative, where everybody is being called by the proper names, by the proper titles, uh, you might end up with, uh, you know, a pretty deep uh, hole uh, and, and a hot soup there. So again, uh, gotta be careful uh, to wherever that you're going. Uh, do a dipstick um, uh, temperature check on your environment so that you actually fit uh, into into the general the norm of the workplace. Um, uh, the the norm of the workplace. Yeah. So. Um, there you go. Um, so I'm just looking at time here. We have a very, uh, very short time. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, I'm very sure that uh, in terms of uh, communication, effective com communication, we want to make sure that uh, we want uh, to be mindful of the things that we are saying, uh, whatever, whatever that comes out from our mouth. I always say this. It's not about what you say, but it's about how you say. It. So if you're being mindful, if you're being respectful and whatever that comes from us uh, comes from the space of respect, we can discuss about anything, anything at all with anyone. And I think that should be the basis of every method of communication when we start designing it up here. So uh, perhaps I, I would like to invite all of you to just look up uh, this uh, this model of effective communication. It's called Pride Model. Um, it won't go wrong, I promise you. Uh, this is more of a mindful uh, approach uh, when we start, uh, you know, having uh, communication with our colleagues, with our friends, um, bosses, uh, families, because it takes us uh, a little bit more than just a second uh, before we start. Uh, uh, churning out whatever that comes out from our mouth. Yeah, so Pride Method is one of the uh, effective uh, approach uh, or designing our uh, communication. Now, just uh, moving through, 
Uh, we talked about communication barriers uh, earlier, and I think I've answered one or two questions based on this. Again, communication barriers. Uh, sometimes, um, I remember the ayam and the itik tadi tu, the, the, the chicken and the duck too. Uh, sometimes we, we, we're not quite sure why uh, when we when we say something, the other person do not understand. So we have to take a step back and assess what just happened. Okay, so you thought that you've been really, really clear, but apparently it did not. So there are a few things that has been the barrier. So, you know, like I said, it might be language barrier, uh, physical barrier, you know, they can't hear well, uh, they, that maybe you don't speak well. Uh, there might be one of it, you know, you're using accent that other people don't understand at the same time. So these are some of the communication barriers. Um, and, um, Again, uh, I, I just wanted to quickly uh, run through here. Uh, all of us have a unique uh, communication uh, processing uh, CPU up here. Um, and uh, it comes out from, uh, from, from us, from deep inside us. And these are all preferences. Sometimes we can be nicer, kinder, more mindful over certain people. Why is that? So you have to watch out for this, yeah? And uh, if you notice as well, we do adjust the way we interact with others at the same time. If you're talking to your mom and dad, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. We adapt our styles when we work uh, with others and sometimes we work better with some others. Uh, these are all preferences. Uh, again, it's all self-internalization. You have to ask yourself what work and what not. Yeah? And um, how do we communicate with different styles? There are so many. Uh, however, there are those uh, who doesn't like uh, uh, chit chat, for example. So we have to take notice of all of this. Some people, they just want uh, facts, figures, you know, in God we trust, the rest comes with data kind of person. Uh, again, we have to uh, uh, understand uh, how do we communicate with these people. Yeah, and um, uh, conflict, again, we talk about uh, conflict and uh, one of the causes, some of the causes for conflict uh, or misunderstanding, uh, it can be a simple facial gesture uh, that they're looking for, which is not there. So uh, perhaps you may want to reflect those kind of conversation between spouses or some friends you know, people forget, right? Uh, we don't want that. So uh, you, you have to ask yourself uh, in terms of uh, what just happened. And uh, again, as I said, uh, some of the toughest conversation uh, you will have is that conversation with, uh, with yourself. Uh, so just a few more minutes. Um, I just want to uh, recap my session today uh, in terms of having the right attitude uh, at the workplace and the kind of positive communications that we should have uh, all the time, I believe. Uh, five tips, I'm sure all of you have more tips than this, but I, I think this is enough to begin. Uh, begin with self-awareness. Uh, if we don't like what others are saying, then most likely that we have to change uh, how we communicate as well. So if we don't like it, then uh, we, we have to uh, change as well. Okay, so don't don't use that. Uh, don't use the, the kind of words that we don't like ourselves. Um, if we are not clear, ask questions. We need to clarify. Why did you say that? What makes you say what you said? So ask questions, clarify. Yeah, observe one minute, reaction. One minute. Okay, yeah. so yeah. observe reaction, listen actively, be inclusive, all those good stuff. And I hope that has wrap up my session today. If you've got questions, I'll be happy to hear from all of you. There you go. So, uh, saya rasa uh, untuk kita buka soalan tu dah uh, kesuntukan lah kan. Tapi ah, kita ada beberapa okay. soalan. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jadinya terima kasih sekali lagi kepada Hani Razai Bolender, career doctor yang bagi perkongsian dalam masa yang sangat singkat tetapi sangat bermakna saya rasa kepada semua pendengar. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Saya sendiri pun belajar banyak juga pada hari ini dan uh, terima kasih kepada semua peserta uh, kerana meluangkan masa ini dan saya ucapkan jumpa lagi pada masa akan datang stay safe kita jaga kita saya serahkan kembali kepada Hasrul terima kasih kepada ni
Uh, Jashra, uh, and yes. Jashra, just uh, just to quickly uh, say this, uh, sesiapa yang nak connect dengan saya, I am on LinkedIn, so they can ask questions as well on uh, after connecting with me on LinkedIn. So the name is exactly as that. There's only one honey. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. There you go, Jashra. Okay. Ya yeah, betul, ok, uh, tadi pun saya memang dah letak dah, memang nak sebut dah kalau uh, ada apa-apa, uh, connect every time for all the speakers, I will say please go connect because we might not be able to handle all the questions during the session, so connect with the uh, speakers and then direct your, your specific questions to them, they might be able to give you a quick answer to your queries, ok, thank you again Encik Ashraf and uh, Puan Hani uh, for that interesting information packed uh, presentation and discussion about workplace values and soft skills are not just good to have but now are already essential in today's market so all those out there remember it's not just your hard skills that are important but soft skills are, are too mm -hmm. thank you again to both of you all right thank you thank you we'll now be moving to our next session of the day it will begin very shortly so click join session to attendees and also complete the survey after each session so uh, that we can continuously serve the better and also visit the My Digital Workforce Week at www.mydigitalworkforceweek.my where we have about 5,000 jobs available from 100 countries across 100 companies across the industry. So for more information, uh, put your comments, check and comments session on the right and then I'll see you in a bit for our final session of the day. Okay.